Good evening, everybody, and welcome here to Coon Rapids for tonight's CBTV broadcast. Jeff Leichman, Bill Cade with you here. So we've got a triangular tonight uh, featuring a Coon Rapids Baird, Eastside County, and Van Meter. And Bill, our first matchup tonight uh, will be the home team here this evening, the Crusaders, and they will be hosting the Bulldogs from Van Meter. Coon Rapids Baird coming into this one with a 3-8 and eight, uh, dual record at Van Meter at 1-8. and eight. And Bill, the interesting thing is probably not going to be a lot of matches, so that puts a lot of pressure on the matches that will happen. Right. Uh, there's only, you know, very few, and, and it, the, the uh, outcome of the duel will be decided by those five or six matches that actually are wrestled, because each team gets about the same number of forfeits. Let's take a look at, at those potential matchups here between uh, Coon Rapids, Bayard, and Van Meter. As you see, the captain's down on the uh, mat right now with the coaches at 106 pounds. Uh, Micah Hoffman for Coon will take on Bailey Tuma from Van Meter at 113 pounds. Patrick McAllister will take on Luke Coslo at 120 pounds. It'll be Christian Hilgenberg against Eric Wilson at 126 pounds. At Van Meter's uh, Jackson Aggie, uh, Aggie excuse me, uh, will be uh, open tonight uh, at 100. 32 pounds. Uh, Liam McAllister will go for Coon Rapids Baird against Chase Wyant uh, from uh, Van Meter. Zach Evans for Coon will wrestle open tonight at 138. At 145, it'll be uh, Logan Namani for Coon against Kurt Sankey of uh, Van Meter. At 152 pounds, Eli Snyder for Coon and Isaac Benton for Van Meter. At 160 pounds, Spencer Winnett from Coon will wrestle open. Nathan Colt for Coon will wrestle open at 170. At 182, Austin Green from Van Meter will wrestle open. And uh, Spencer Benton will wrestle open at 220 pounds for Van meter in this opening match up here tonight and well uh, we're going to start at 126 pounds and that means uh, we will get our first forfeit of the night is coming out on the mat uh, will be a Jackson Aggie uh, for Van meter he will pick up the uh, the forfeit here in this first match tonight it means our next matchup uh, it is going to be at 132 pounds that will be at Liam McAllister uh, for Coon Rapids Baird he'll be taking on at Chase Wyant uh, now uh, Wyant will come into this matchup uh, 12 and 4 on the season uh, and Bill I know that uh, you have uh, the Coon Rapids Baird records actually I have those and at 132 pounds Liam McAllister will come in at 4 and 9 so it looks like uh, Wyant might have the advantage but you never know you guys still do it on the mat you bet Liam, a youngster out here, first year, seeing a lot of varsity action. He'll be in the green singlets here as we get set to start. Wyant will be in the red ones. This is at 132 pounds. Okay, the match has started here. They're just kind of circling in the middle, filling each other out a little bit. Um, <laughs> Wyant drops to a knee, drops in, gets it on a single, comes around, picks the leg up, ends up getting a takedown. Um, as soon as the coon wrestler tries to come up, he pops a cradle in. Does a suicide. Uh, he's on the edge of the mat, not going to get any points there unless he can slide him in. Now he's got him slid in. Um, and uh, got two back points. Uh, was able to hold him there for two, and then they slid on out of bounds. So Callister it's did uh, a pretty good job there getting himself out of bounds and rolling through, didn't he? Yeah, he, he didn't want to give up any more than that. And uh, he obviously, he's given up a little bit here in experience. Again, they start. Uh, McAllister tries to come up a little bit. Uh, Wyatt pulls him right back, sucks him back onto his back, and now he's getting some back points. He's not going to get a fall there unless he can change the hold a little bit. Now he comes around up on top, and McAllister just slides to his base. Um, Wyatt's got a nice bar arm on there. He's keeping the pressure on. Uh, now he halves on the uh, left side, picks into the crotch, sinks a half. He's got him over pretty deep there. Quite a bit of time left here. Uh, it's going to be tough for uh, McAllister to keep this going, but he's... Bridging pretty hard, got his one shoulder up, trying to work back and forth from side to side. 45 seconds left in this first period, still 6 nothing right now. Wyatt from uh, Van Meter on top of McAllister for Coon Rapids Baird. McAllister keeps trying to get an arm through, and uh, Wyatt stopped that now, and, and uh, he's got a pretty good half in there. Uh, not a lot of action, but both wrestlers are working hard. Uh, rolls up, gets the other shoulder up a little bit. Uh, Down to 20 seconds left in the first period. There, the fall. So Chase Wyatt will win this first matchup by fall. We will then get a forfeit uh, for Zach Evans at 138 pounds as Coon will get on the board. Our next matchup out here on the mat will be at uh, 145 pounds. That'll be at Logan Namani taking on Kurt Sankey.
And, uh, and do you have the records on those two? I got them. I'll hand you this sheet here, Bill, so you have the one with the records. <laughs> That'll okay. make it a little easier here. Okay. Sankey at six and eight, and uh, Nemanja at nine and four. So this time Nemanja may have a little bit of an advantage again, but. Uh, you don't know who has wrestled against who, and then so we'll have to see who the competition is, who comes out the better here. So it'll be Nemanja and Sankey. They're getting leg bands. Right now the team score is at 12 to 6 in favor of Van Meters. We're set at this 145-pound weight class. Both guys starting out up top here, Bill. Just kind of feeling each other shot. out, yep. see what we can tie up. There's Nemanja Low on a nice shot into the leg, got the takedown, gets the post arm tied up, looking for a half right away. He's keeping that left side tied up. Now he switches to the crotch to lift him over, into a stack, gets him to his back. Again, he's gonna have to tighten some things up, but uh, Sankey gets back to his base, come to his feet. Got the two for got the takedown the escape. and two for the yeah. back point. He leads it now 4-1. And again, uh, Nemanja's trying to change his level a little bit, get a little lower. This time it's uh, Sankey that lowers and tries to go in. Nemanja catches him with the underhook and throws him to his back. This time it looks pretty tight right there. A lot of time, minute five left on that clock here in the first period. That's a real deep half. If he can uh, just keep that head up in the air and tighten things up, that's a long time. See the official really there getting in there, and there it is. A win by fall for Logan Nemanja. Well, even the team points up here at uh, 12 apiece. And Nemanja gets a nice win here tonight as we'll move on to the 152-pound weight class. Eli Snyder going up against Isaac Benton. And let's see, Snyder 1-2, and two and uh, Benton is 5-2. and two. So, again, a lot, not a lot of matches, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Again, this could be a match that decides who wins this duel with all these fall, uh, with all these forfeits. Absolutely. So one thing that's really been hurting Coon Rapids Baird in their dual matches a lot this year. A lot of their wrestlers have good individual records, but that dual record is just three and eight because of the lack of of wrestlers on the team right now and all the forfeits they give up each night. And the two wrestlers have started. Uh, it's uh, Benton. Benton who uh, slays her out of that leg, but uh, Snyder's gotten into a wizard and around behind. He's got that leg caught on the inside. Fisher hasn't given anything up yet. Now Benton works his leg up on that leg. He's working, trying to work his way up to get to the takedown, but uh, Snyder's control off. Now Benton gets the. Uh, Gets the takedown. He's got uh, Schneider on his back a little bit. Schneider trying to work his way back, slips a half in. Not a real deep half, but Schneider trying to work his way off, gets off his back, back to his base. Benton throws in a leg and, and brings him back for a tilt. This is one where Benton looks like he's almost got to be careful that he doesn't pin himself. Uh, he's gotten I, himself rolled over now. Yeah, and he's got him pulled back in there for a pin. But I think it was a case of two young wrestlers that are trying things they've started to learn but maybe aren't uh, the most proficient at yet. Yeah, I've seen but guys they're before trying. Yep, do those kind of moves, get themselves kind of on their own back, mm -hmm. yeah. and end up pinning themselves. So that yeah, gives uh, Van Meter the pin there. So that'll make it uh, 18 to 12 right now. Team score, Spencer Winnett from Coon Rapids Baird will pick up the forfeit victory here at 160 pounds. And then Nathan Colt from, excuse me, from uh, Coon Rapids Baird also will pick up a forfeit victory. Coon Rapids, so Coon Rapids Baird will come back and take a lead here at 24-18 and then we get four straight or two forfeits uh, for. Van Meter, Austin Green at uh, 182 pounds. Both teams are open at 195. And then Spencer Benton will be able to take the four fin at 220 pounds. I haven't seen Colt come out yet, but I think he's heading over to the scorer's table. Should pick up that four fin at is. 170 pounds. <laughs> at 170, Van Meter is... 
Open. Yeah. Clear is Barry Nathan Colt. Receive the forfeit. So that'll make it 24-18 now, and then it'll tie at 24 apiece with Austin Green again. So, Bill, we're down to three matches after the next forfeit at, at 220 pounds. That will be Austin Micah Hoffman Green. at 106 He's against the the Bailey Tuma. 113 will be Patrick McAllister against uh, Luca Acasolo. And at 120, Christian Hilgenberg for Kuhn will take on Eric Wilson. Uh, for Kuhn to be able to, to at least have a chance at tying this matchup, they've got to win two of those three and win them by, four, by fall. And I think they're in pretty good shape. I, these, they're all three pretty good, solid wrestlers. I know... Uh, I guess I have the records here for Van Meter, but uh, uh, you know they got some pretty good kids there. There's uh, an eight and six, three and three, and a four and twelve coming up for Van Meter. So uh, it's going to be tight one before we get done. Yeah, it certainly will be. We'll move on now to 106, and it'll get Micah Hoffman from Coon Rapids Baird against a Bailey Tuma and, from uh, Van Meter. And Tuma's eight and six with. Uh, Huffman being 12 and 1. So, I want to thank you for joining us for our high school wrestling coverage again here tonight. Broadcast for you on CBTV, also on the Carol Broadcasting website, and you can find it on all three of the radio station Facebook pages as well. Set here at 106 pounds. We'll let Bill take it over. Okay, again, the wrestlers are just kind of circling a little bit, seeing what each other's doing. Probably the first time they've seen each other this year. A little bit of a tie. Looks like Huffman wants to stay a little bit wide open. There comes a good shot to the leg. Picks it up. Drops him right to his back. He's got a reverse half in. Not real tight yet, but he'll tighten it up. Got the forearm. Now he's starting to scoop the head. There comes a little deeper reverse half. He does have three back points if he doesn't get the fall here. Now he's got a real deep reverse half. and He's trying to tie up that far side. And with this much time left, he's just trying to what? He switches switch sides and then loses him, but goes right into a tilt. 5 nothing our score here. A 11 to go in the first period. And Michael Huffman's Hoffman keeping the pressure on. Right. Another half. But uh, Toom is able to roll through this time. Now he's putting a head in there, lock, trying to lock up a cradle. Got the cradle locked, got him over. And, and there it is. A, fall. a win by fall for Micah Hoffman. So right now, the Crusaders three and one in matches that have actually been wrestled here tonight. And they've been doing a lot of that this season. This is a good group of fairly young wrestlers as Patrick McAllister will take the mat at 113 pounds against Luke Coslow. And uh, Coslow's three and three and McAllister's seven and five. So this could be a match that decides what happens. Uh, I think uh, Coon Rapids will have the advantage at uh, 20 here a little bit, but this is two young kids going at her here. Tied at 30-30 and team points right now. Again, um, Coslow dropped down a little bit, but didn't go in after leg. There he's trying to reach for the leg a little bit. Pulled it in, now he's got to get off the side, but uh, McAllister gets uh, him off his base a little bit. So they're going back and forth. Uh, if Costco can keep spinning around behind without going out of bounds, but they do get end up out of bounds. <laughs> For all you CRB fans, if Patrick McAllister looks a little familiar, he is the younger brother of former CRB wrestler Marty McAllister. And again, uh, Costco likes to be tied up. Doesn't look like uh, McAllister just soon. He'd just soon be free and be able to shoot. Trying to pull the arm and get to that leg a little bit. There he shoots into that leg. Now if he could spin around behind, but uh, gonna try to cut across the other side. He's got the head out a little bit, if he can pop his head up. But uh, Coslow gets him broke down, he comes right back up. Needs to get the head off to the side a little bit. Whatever he does, Coslow tries to get to that cross face. Spun through and uh, McAllister was able to catch that headlock as they rolled through. So he's got a nice tight headlock. He's got the takedown. He's going to have three back points here and maybe get a fall. You have to watch his weight as Costello keeps going back and forth. And Costello looks like he's going to get off his back, maybe come around behind for two. But uh, McAllister pulled him back underneath. So he did not give up the reversal. 
He has a five to nothing lead, 15 seconds remaining here as they'll go out of bounds in this first period. So Costello's not giving anything up. He got back up to his feet and was able to get uh, free and get out of bounds, but now they'll start here with, uh, what, 14 seconds left. Right to his feet, pulls him back, but uh, Costello sits, stays in good position, gets a switch and a reversal. Make it five to two right now in favor of McAllister. The first period will come to an end. And, and Bill, at that time, uh, Patrick had some opportunities. What did he need to maybe change up to get that? Well, that on his headlock, early on. whenever I, my kids, when they had a headlock, I'd like to see him look at the feet because he was looking still over front and he kind of went to the front. If you look at the feet, you're lifting the head and he puts the shoulder blades down. And it's just something he'll learn because he's a young kid. Uh, out here probably wrestling his first year of varsity the way it looked. Again, uh, Costello spin around and got out a little bit, but uh, McAllister stays in that leg, and now he's trying to walk it around. Looks up top, maybe able to hook up a cradle, maybe not. Five to the score, minute 35 to go. In the second period, Patrick McAllister with the lead for Coon Rapids Baird, tied at 30-30 in team points right now with a one match remaining here this evening. And I tell you, they both neither one want to give up anything. They're just fighting away in there. Uh, again, they get a little more experience. They'll know what to do at a certain time, maybe take advantage of a situation they're in. But uh, these two guys are going at it. They got a lot of heart and hard to say who's going to get who here, even though it's five to two. They'll bring them back into the middle. Minute 19 to go in the first. Second period, I should say. And again, uh, Costello's trying to get those hands tied up, and, and uh, McAllister's trying a little bit of a tilt there, two on one. Now he's trying to go down underneath with that bar arm a little bit, but he keeps driving forward to keep Costello off his base. Costello comes up to his feet. And he's gonna work the hands and get himself an escape. So now we're at 5-3. So uh, this takedown could be big for the match if somebody could get one here at the end of the second period. It's Costello that gets into the leg, but uh, they're out of bounds. They'll bring them back into the middle again. Our score right now, 5-3. to three. Patrick McAllister from Coon Rapids Baird on top of Luke Costello from Van Meter. Again, uh, Costello kind of likes to hang on the head a little bit, but uh, McAllister likes to get down lower and get into a leg, and he's gotten hold of the leg if he can spin around to the side, but they're going to push each other right on out of bounds. And they're both starting to look a little bit tired. You know, maybe they don't get into the second and third period a lot, so. A lot of weight on. Costello tries to go low. Got the leg, but he's kind of got him sprawled out pretty good. Callister got those ankles, pushing on the head, doesn't let him get it up on the side. I think this is where we're going to end up. Oh, two, seconds two seconds left. Yep. I think we got a locked hands. Is that what I saw the official signal there? Uh, I don't. I don't think so, but he may have. Two seconds left in the third. A second period comes to an end. We'll go to the third. But Patrick McAllister. Still leading this one here, five to three for Coon Rapids Baird. And it'll be McAllister's choice, and he's gonna go down. So he's gotta get up and out. Costello comes up on top. Tries to tripod up a little bit. Costello's uh, keeping that post arm tied up, but he got a cradle hooked up, lets it go. Try to hook up another cradle. He's got to find something to get him turned. And, and uh, McAllister just keeps working down, back up to his base and keeps working down there underneath. But Costello keeps trying to break him down. Trying to suck him back. McAllister turns hard to his base. So it's, it's Costello trying a lot of different little things, but uh, McAllister is countering everything. He's not going to let him get those anything hooked up to turn up some back points. 
He's got a minute 18 to hold on here to get an escape and extend his lead that sits at 5-3. If Costco gets that arm, it keeps him down, so it, it's harder for McAllister to get away. He's got to keep that arm free and get some hand control. And he keeps trying to do the stand-up, but he can't get there because he keeps blocking that uh, post arm for him. And he's trying to get to his feet. He's got the hands, got to the feet. If he can get his foot free as uh, Costco lowers down on that one leg. Got them both. Callister works back up. Got the cradle hooked up now. But he can't get the back turn. Now he slid him under. Now he's going to get some back points here. Callister needs to break those hands. Callister gets back to his base, gets the hands broke. Now he's going to come up on top. That's a big reversal there. That's a big reversal with 12 seconds left. Bill gives him a 7-6 lead. Here comes Costello. Nice move, spin around. Now he's got the reversal. That is going to be the end. I did not see points awarded for now a he reversal, got the reversal that time. 8-7. Nope, they did. They put him on the board now. So an 8-7 win that time for Luke Costello. And that'll make it 33 to 30 right now going into the last matchup. And uh, those two just kept going out. Two yeah. young, little young guys really uh, worked extremely hard for the whole thing. It's a hard one to lose, but he'll learn a lot. Watch the tapes on that one. A lot of positions that he could have changed just a little bit, made a point here or there. So. Right now, head coach Dave Means over patting him on the chest and yep. kind of giving him Don't a nice pat back on up, the back. Because they'll Absolutely. get a chance to look at that tape, and uh, he won't make a lot of those same mistakes again. This time it's uh, Hilgenberg, got the head tight, got a heel pick, right into a nice takedown. He's trying to get the pressure on. He, he's going to go after that six as quick as he can. Um, Wilson sits out, but Hilgenberg's got that arm tied up. And he knows where he's at. All right, Christian Hilgenberg here against Eric Wilson from Van Meter early in this first period. Uh, Hilgenberg trying to get to the far arm, and Wilson keeps uh, pulling him down with that near arm, so they're kind of fighting against each other a little bit. Hilgenberg trying to get pick the ankle up to tilt him over on his back with that far arm. Looks like he may try it again. He's trying to work a little bit of a butcher move there. That far arm. Now Wilson got up, got a hold of the leg. Working to their feet. Now he's going to give him one. Two to one. Hilgenberg with the lead. 50 seconds to go first period. Tries to snap by a little bit again. Trying for that. Pick that ankle a bit. Got the ankle. Now he can spin around and get his two. All he needs is a four-point win. Yeah, I'm sure he wants the pin, but he's got the two points already. He's up four to one. 33 seconds to go here in the first period. So if he can get an eight point win, uh, that would get uh, Coon Rapids the win. He's gonna hook up a cradle as Wilson tried to stand up. Got that head in the, in the ribs. Trying to hook that ankle and walk it up. Lost the hands, he doesn't have the cradle. I think trying to hook the cradle back up. Now he's got the cradle hooked up. Got him over a little bit. I think he may have gotten two. Lost the hand, yep. He did get two, that'll make it six to one. Three seconds to go here in the period. And he will get two points, and that'll make it a six to one lead here going into the second period. And Bill, it looked like uh, Christian really kind of in control of that first period. He was. Uh, you know, he uh, was looking for ways to get a pin, uh, but he's built himself a nice lead. He needs to get a few more, uh, whether it be here with the reverse horse, you know, take him down, let him go, take him down until he builds up a lead to get the, the extra point for the team win. But trying to work here. Is, and their Granby becomes all the way out on a reversal. And there's a nice coming around on, the, on a uh, sit out the other direction. And uh, Wilson's done, or Coslo's doing, oh, Wilson is doing a nice job of riding there. As uh, Hilgenberg did a couple, three nice moves. Now he's got a cradle, but uh, he's not in a very good position to use it. Now the hands get broke. Uh, Hilgenberg's beat on that leg. 
Christian trying to slide out the backside the way it looks. And there he drops him down to his yep. hips, gets the reversal. So now he's up by seven. You know, another tilt or anything gets uh, Coon Rapids a, a dual win if he can hang on that many points. He's got the half on, but he's still up. So Helgenberg's really trying to get the, the tilt and turn him over, but now trying to hook up the cradle. Got those long arms. He gets the cradle hooked up, drops him back. Got to get him positioned a little better. He's all the way around. Still got the cradle hooked up. Tried to knock him over, didn't get it done. So uh, Wilson's not giving up in there, but uh, Helgenberg's really keeping the pressure on, trying to take the post arm. He's a head lever a little bit. Trying to get that arm bar to cross there. Now he's got the arm bar going for the forearm. See if he can tilt him. Come to their feet. Wilson's going to get one. Now it's a six point match. Heat two, 20 seconds left in the second period. Snap by, didn't quite catch the leg. Then he goes back and gets the leg. Needs to stay in bounds. He's got one leg. If he can get, uh, lift that up a little higher and trip the other one out. Six seconds left in the second period. Wilson's doing a nice job pushing down and ahead. Uh, Hilgenberg was in where he could have, you know, looked like he was in good shape to get a takedown, but Wilson did a nice job with the wiggle and pushing on the head. And the second period will come to an end with Kunabas Baird Christian Hilgenberg on top here, eight to two. And Bill, any win right now will give the match to Kunabas Baird. They'd have picked up more victories by fall. I know they've used that as a tiebreaker a couple of times. Coons won one match this year that way and lost the match this year, that way this year as well. <laughs> So, but I'm sure they want to win it by points so you don't have to go down the tiebreaker. So I'm sure uh, Christian will be looking for a couple more points here. Yeah, and he Actually, tied up I that, likes to have that far arm a little it's, bit. It's 2-2 two -two in false. So it could come down to a lot of other things. Who scored yeah. the first points? I mean, it goes way down the line. So I'm sure he'd just soon get uh, that four point win. You know, he, pretty soon he may just, because uh, he's had pretty good success taking him down. He may start letting him go and taking him down to see if he can build that lead up a little bit. Got to get him over and get three back points here. That would, probably that would do it too, difference. but yep. uh, he's having a hard time turning Wilson. Uh, Wilson could step over and almost got... Uh, and will get a reversal here. Maybe. Yeah, uh, Hilgenberg's trying to... Uh, was trying to almost suicide, got caught in a headlock, gave up the reversal, and now he's giving up some back points. Eight to four, now the score with I think three back points. I think it's going to be eight to seven. Coming. Yep. Hilgenberg, Hilgenberg comes out, out the back side to get the reversal. Now he's up three. Got his hips down, got a half in if he could... But right away, uh, Wilson brings those hips up. He's not going to let him get that easy tilt. 25 Here comes seconds that winging left. him down again. Uh, Hilgenberg's got to get those hips up so he doesn't get caught again. Fifteen seconds to go here in the third period. 10-7, Hilgenberg with the lead. But uh, Wilson's got that headlock hooked up again. But Hilgenberg this time is able to roll him on through. That'll save it with three seconds left here. Hilgenberg looks like he'll probably pick up the victory. And then we'll have to go through the tiebreakers. Yep. <laughs> and that'll do it. Christian Hilgenberg will pick up the 10 to seven victory. And again, Wilson just kept coming back. He wasn't going to give up in there. That'll make the team score again, 33-33 and now I don't know if they'll have to get the real book out here and figure this one out, but we'll give you that final score as soon as they get her figured out. How could it happen? It's Baird at Bell going to be awarded the victory here tonight, 34 to 33, a criteria H. And you've been kind of running through uh, some of the possibilities here towards the end of the match. It, it All the way down to criteria H, most first takedowns, 4 to 2 in favor of the Crusaders. Right, they had the one match where they went up, but they ended up losing the match, but got them first. So, yeah, that's... And that's fairly common in a, in a uh, 
tie meet to go down to there. It comes down to who scored the most points first, who was most aggressive at the start of the matches. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the, the matches here again tonight. Uh, 106 pounds, Micah Hoffman from Coon Rapids Beard wins by fall over Bailey Tuma at 132 pounds, or 113 pounds, excuse me, Luke Coslo uh, from Van Meter wins 8-7 to seven over Patrick McAllister at 120 pounds. Christian Hilgenberg from Coon Rapids Beard picks up a 10-7 win over Eric Wilson at 126 pounds. Jackson Agee uh, wins by forfeit for Van Meter at 132 pounds. Chase Wyatt picks up a victory by fall over Liam McAllister at 138 pounds. Zach Evans from Coon Rapids Baird wins by forfeit at 145 pounds. Logan Nemanny wins by fall for Coon Rapids Baird over at Kurt Sankey at 152 pounds. It was Isaac Benton from Van Meter defeating Eli Snyder from Coon by fall. Uh, Spencer Winnett at 160 pounds picks up a win by forfeit for Coon Rapids Baird. At 170 pounds, Nathan at Colt picks up a win by forfeit for Coon Rapids Baird. At 182 pounds, Austin Green from Van Meter picks up a win by forfeit. And at 220 pounds, Spencer Benton picks up a win for Van Meter by forfeit. I'll have that Isak and Van Meter matchup coming up for you. Let's get you sent for this second uh, duel of the evening here tonight between Isak County and Van Meter. Uh, we'll start at 132 pounds as Chase Wyatt uh, from Van Meter is going to pick up a, a win by forfeit here tonight. Uh, Bill Manny Magania uh, not able to wrestle for Isak County at the 132 pound weight class. He didn't make weight today, so uh, he's up at 38. Uh, so yeah, we, did, we lost a match there. And that'll move us uh, to the 138-pound weight class. And Eastside County should pick up a uh, forfeit here. And let's see who they're going to send out. That'll be uh, Colin Hamrell coming out. Well, that is who is scheduled to wrestle at 138. Michael Sutton. Michael Sutton is coming out to pick up the win by forfeit. So the youngster. Getting his record now to 1-0 and on the season. On <laughs> nice he start. Picks up, yep, his first win. We'll move on to now to 145, and this will be our first actual match of the night that will count. <laughs> and we only have four, so yep. it's going to be uh, a quick one here. Andrew Mer Andrew Murley will go for Eastland County, and Kurt Sankey uh, going right now for Van Meter. And again, uh, Murley's trying to go down low. Sankey's trying to spin around. Gets the leg picked up a little bit. Murley trying to go that cross face. Gets the leg off, broke down. because Bill uh, have made an effort to get inside. Murley was the one dropping lower. That time he did get down, got into a double, got the two takedown. Now he needs to work up the back a little bit. Sankey's got to be careful he doesn't stay there too long and give up some back points. But he gets himself to his base. So it's just the two takedown. And uh, Murley liked to go low and get in deep and he get, finally got there. Back in the middle with a little over a minute left. I'll bring them back into the middle of the meet, Matt. Isak looking for their first dual win, 0-8 oh on the season, while Van Meter 1-9 coming into this matchup. Yeah. Isak got a little bit of a head start on that one. Again, uh, Sankey right to his feet, trying to work the hands, get himself free. Almost got there, and uh, Murley was able to grab him back. Almost had that himself an escape. I'm sure he'll probably try to come up again. He needs to get the hands on the way up so he can get that escape. Again, he got up, but he didn't have had enough hand control to free himself. And his coach is yelling at him, grab that hand, get that control. This time, uh, Murley keeps him from getting up, gets that post arm tied up a little bit. Sankey's pretty flat there on the mat. Yeah, 
Steve Sack wearing the red singlets here in this matchup with Van Meter, the home team in green. And really gets a half in. Sankey needs to work his way up. Now he starts bringing the hips up. Oh, he's trying to run that chicken wing. Now Sankey comes to his feet, working the hands. There he gets the hands free. He's got a headgear down over his eyes. They're going to stop that. That time he finally got the hand control and was able to get himself free. That'll make it two to one. Six seconds left in this first period. Murley again with Isak with the lead right now. Andrew trying to improve to three and seven on the season with a victory here. Sankey having a little issue. Head coach I'm going to come out and work on those. And the head care kind of head slipped gear. out over his eyes. And See if either one makes a quick shot. There's Sankey's in again. Got close. He didn't quite have enough time, but he was trying to get that other takedown. Yeah, nice move that time by Murley to get inside right away. It's like it's Sankey's choice. He's going to go down. Jeff Lankman, Bill Kane with you here tonight from Coon Rapids. That time uh, Sankey kind of sat into a switch, but Murley had the uh, post arm tied up pretty good, broke him down, but Sankey's laying flat again. Murley tries to get that half in. Now Sankey comes up, got some hands. There's his escape. But he's doing a little better job just now when he gets to his feet having some hand control so he can get that escape. So now it's 2-2. Two -two. But Murley's had the advantage here on their feet because he stays a little lower. There he's getting on that double shot, got the head popped off to the side. Coming around. Get the There's head the out. Two. There it is. There's the two-point takedown. Murley now up four to two. Minute and a half to go, second period. Again, Sankey staying pretty flat to that mat. Got that head down. He gets a half picked in on him again. He's going to have to work up. Murley can't quite sink the half deep enough to get him turned. Right back in with a half, but this time Sankey comes up with the hips. Bella, pretty exciting and interesting first match here between these two teams. We're yep. tied at six piece after a couple of forfeits. Sankey again, looks like he's trying to go into a switch, but Murray's got that post on, it sits under him. Kind of turns himself to his back, and if Murley can keep that arm tied up, may get some back points here. Now he's starting to get the count. Sankey's turning hard, trying to get the arm through. Got it fairly tight. There it is. This. Andrew Murley, the win by fall for East San County, they will take. A 12 to 6 lead here, and now looks like potentially we're going to have a, a run of forfeits. Nope, I think East San County going to send out her, a wrestler here. Colin Haverhill, maybe. Wrestling at 152 for East Sac, Andrew Murley for Van Meter, Isaac Benton. Okay, we were saying Murley on the last yep. one. That had to be Hopper. That had to be uh, Colin Haverhill. We apologize there as they. Moved guys around with us. So it was Colin Hobberl that got the uh, win by fall at one by fall. Now this is Merley, a freshman, going against uh, Isaac Benton. Benton. They always love it when I go talk to you coaches. You tell me you're not going to move anybody, <laughs> and then you do. <laughs> yeah, it's right. supposed to be a surprise, but everybody knows you probably will. But again, Isaac's been down there trying to get into a takedown. Gets a little overextended. Uh, Benton comes around with a cradle, hooks it up, takes him down for two. Going to get a couple back points probably with it. Benton putting a leg in. There's the two back points. Actually putting both legs in. Looks like he's fairly comfortable with that area, sitting to his haunches and then trying to tilt. They go out of bounds. At 11 left here in the first period. Benton right now with a four to nothing lead. Both guys go a little early that time. Yeah, I think the, uh, well, the official now is going to put it on green. But 
It was one he almost could have took because one started early and then the other one went early. And yep, so Benton will get the warning there. And now they're going to be ready to go. And again, uh, Murley tried to come with a stand up. Benton doing a good job. Stop and stand up, gets both legs in again. He just looks pretty comfortable there. Trying to work a power half in. Murley doing a nice job getting to his base. Now Benton pulls him back off the base. Benton better be careful. He could pin himself down there. He might get a little too comfortable yeah. with those two legs in. Again, he's trying to work that power half. Now he's getting some back points with it. Working his way up on top. Now he's starting to get things tied up pretty good. There's there the fall. A win by a fall for Isaac Benton of Van Meter at 152 pounds. Over Andrew Murley from East San County, 160 pounds. Both teams' belt are open. At 160. Now, at 170, we should get a win here at 170 for Dustin Ackerman from East San County. We'll wait and see exactly at what they do. Both, are, both schools are open, so we go to 170 for East Sac. Ackerman is going to come out. He will pick up the win here by forfeit. So that'll make it a 18 to 12 lead for East Sac County. 170, Quinn Ackerman receives a forfeit. And then that'll bring us it to 182 pounds. Chris Vilhauer, who had a good year running the football for the ESAC football team this season, will take on Austin Green for Van Meter. Green picked up a win by forfeit in that matchup earlier tonight against Coon Rapids Bayard. And we got one that's two and three and one that's two and two, so Neither not a lot, a lot of matches. matches. Yep. Not a lot of matches. Little hand checking there. And just a little circling. Not much happened yet as far as a shot. There's a shot a little bit with uh, Bill Hauer. Bill Hauer. And uh, <clears throat> Green caught that uh, cow catcher and was able to get him over to his back. Vilhar's trying to get himself off. He's got to take that left hand through. He's not going to get it there. So he got caught in a cow catcher and just got thrown to his back. Austin Green from Van Meter will pick up the win by fall. And Vilhauer that time, Bill, shot in and just got himself in a little bit of trouble. He was, that he was a little bit overextended, and uh, Green just caught a cow catcher underhook on the one side and flipped him over just like they do when they're wrestling bulls or you know, and they're out in the rodeo, but uh, Cole now we're up a little bigger boys at 220. So Cole Rowetter from East Sac County will go up against Spencer Benton. Benton picking up a win by forfeit earlier tonight against Cooner Rapids Baird. And Bill, he's got a pretty good record for a first year wrestler. He's 13 and two, so he's doing very well. Rowetter a freshman, so. Head coach at John Smith from ESAC. Very young team this year, Bill. A lot yeah. of guys really kind of learning on the go here. Benton's got kind of a headlock. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Benton trying to throw him over here. He's got that yeah, right He's just arm putting the pressure, going to take him right over to his back with that headlock. And he's got uh, Rowetter in some trouble there on uh, back, and that's going to end early. But he just have to lock up that front headlock and just power him over. Um, Pretty strong wrestler. Yeah, so Benton, Benton will pick up the win by fall. That'll move us to the heavyweight division where Wyatt Riling from Eastside County should pick up a win here by forfeit. <laughs> Bill will get into a ton of forfeit matches at 106, 113, and 120. As uh, Van Meter should pick up three straight forfeit wins. Yes. 
There's Tuma. Should make it 42-24 team score wise going into what will be our final matchup of this match. At 126, Matt Marshall, a freshman for Esac County, will come in at two and five, and he'll be wrestling at Jackson Aggie. Aggie again, Bill, four and three uh, coming into this one. So again, not a lot of matches. Nope. Still kind of early in the season. For Van Meter, Jacket Jackson. And we're ready to go for our final matchup here. At and, Van Meter uh, and Isak County matchup. Aggie goes in right into a nice low shot. Gets his two, lets him go. There's another snap by. There's another takedown. Gonna let him go. Realizes he has a real advantage on his feet. Build up a lead here. Tries that little snap by again into a leg, drops him right down, lets him go again. 30 seconds in, he's already got three takedowns. Yep, six to three, our lead here. There's a sweep to his other side. Picks foot up a little higher. Trip the other leg, there's two. I'll make it eight to three. Hooks up the cradle. This time he's going to pop him backwards. Went a little too fast and brought him a little too far around. Marshall was able to hook up the leg a little bit. Aggie should have just taken his time a little bit there. He had a good, good cradle hooked up. Now he's trying to get into his spladle. He's got him hooked up pretty good. Leg slips loose. Pick up a couple back points. 10-3 the score here. 40 seconds to go first period. Got a good cradle hooked up. See if he takes his time a little bit with this one. Aggie with the lead here. No, now he lets it go. And he's going to give him a skate. That'll make it 10 for exactly 30 seconds left in the period. Aggie hooks up both arms. A little of a throw to the back. He's got him caught on his back. 10 seconds left in the period. Marshall, good job that time of getting over to his base. Turn to his base and getting away from it. Hooks up into the leg. He'll pick up two more back points there. It'll be 14 to four as we go into the second period. Aggie looking over at his coaches right now. Marshall's gonna take his choice, go down. And uh, Aggie says, let him have one. I want to start on my feet. So there's another escape. <laughs> See if he wants to go with another drag or if he wants to sweep a single again. He tries to get that overhook. Really, Jap Wizard? Jap Wizard was able to get the takedown. Didn't catch the back points with it, but he was able to get the takedown with that nice Jap Wizard. Trying to do a little tilting. Going to let him go. 16 to 6 the score here. A minute 15 to go, second period. Trying to give Matt Marshall some credit here, Bill. He's a little bit overmatched in this one, but he still keeps coming in there. Yes, he does. There's another Jap Wizard. This time he catches him on his back. So, but Marshall just keeps working his way off. So it's going to be over here. It's going to be whether it's a fall or a 15-pointer. And Marshall's not giving up in there. He's trying to get back to his base. Keeps working underneath there. Not going to just let him have it. 30 seconds to go. You can see the official waiting to see what happens here. 
He's already got the three points for the for the back points here. Aggie slips into a pretty deep half now. If he, he looks like he wants to go after the fall. There it, there it is. is. With 14 seconds remaining in the second period, Jackson Aggie will win by fall here tonight over at Matt Marshall. Let's uh, run you through our scores here. That'll make it 48 to 24 Van Meter with the victory here this night. Uh, let's run you through the uh, results here for Van Meter in East Sac County. We'll start at 106 pounds where Bailey Tuma from uh, Van Meter wins by forfeit. Luke Coslo from East uh, from Van Meter wins by forfeit at 113. Eric Wilson from uh, Van Meter wins by forfeit at 120. Jackson Aggie wins by fall uh, for Van Meter over Matt Marshall at 126. It was at Chase Wyatt from Van Meter winning by forfeit at 132. Michael Sutton from uh, Eastside County wins by forfeit at 138. It was uh, Colin Habra winning a by fall over Kurt Sankey at 145. Uh, it was, uh, <coughs> Andrew Murley from uh, East Sac County falling, uh, losing by fall. Isaac Benton uh, from Van Meter at 152. Both teams open at 160. Quentin Ackerman from East Sac wins by forfeit at 170. It was Austin Green uh, from Van Meter defeating uh, Chris Vilhauer from East Sac at 182 by fall. Both teams open at 195. The it was Spencer two, Benton uh, from uh, Van Meter defeating Cole Rowetter at uh, 220 pounds. And then it was uh, Wyatt Riling from East Sac County winning at the heavyweight division by forfeit. Again, that final score, Van Meter over Eastside County, 48 to 24. Eastside will wrestle Cooner Abbott's Bear next. We get set for our matchup here tonight between Eastside County and uh, Coon Rapids of Baird and Bell. Kind of the theme of the night. Uh, we're going to have a lot of open weights here tonight, uh, but we will also get some matchups in. Five matches scheduled with the way we've been told coaches are planning on moving things around here. We'll start off at 138 pounds. It is going to be for East Sac, Michael, Michael Sutton, Sutton for East Sac County. Baird, he will Zach be going Evans. against Zach Evans from Coon Rapids Baird. So Sutton again to wrestle at 138 here. And he got his first win of the year earlier tonight with a forfeit. Well, Zach Evans is 13 and one. So Evans got into a nice takedown. He's got the half. There it is. And there's a quick pin by Zach Evans. So, I've seen Zach wrestle a few times this year, Bill, and I'll tell you what, you didn't get a chance to see much of him in that match up there, but I think as a freshman, you'd be impressed with that young man. And Sutton, obviously, first night he's had some matches, so. Yep. Gonna move now to the 145 pound weight class. It'll be a Logan to Manny for uh, Coon Rapids Baird. Colin Hubbro will be going up for East Sac County. Harborough had a nice win earlier tonight. So. He did. Picked up a nice win, absolutely. And we're set here at 145 pounds. We're underway. The man, he got a nice lead in the first match and then uh, kind of held on towards the end. There's a nice drop down to the leg with the man. He. So pop it up. Got to get his arm around, get his two. There's his takedown. Manny now on top here, two to nothing for Cooner Rapids Baird. Finally gets that arm out. Got the post arm tied up, head lever. Then he brings across for a bar. comes to his feet. The man drives him out of bounds. So they will come back to the middle. 59 seconds to go in the first period and a two to nothing lead right now for Logan to Manny. Logan may have come down a little funky holding on to that right elbow. Yeah, shaking, shaking that right, right elbow a little bit. Right up to his feet. Lifts him. Drops him down to the mat. Steps right in between those legs. Got that left arm tied up again. Gets the bar. See if he can use it a little better. Now, Habro comes base up, gets those hips up a little bit. Manny driving that head lever, steps over, six and a half in. Did a nice job with that head lever. 
Picking up some Lifting that head up. He's got some pressure on that head lifted that high in the air. That's tough on uh, Harborough. She can't get the head down to bridge at all with that head lifted up like that. Down to 10 seconds left here in the first period. It'll be five to nothing if he doesn't get the pin here. Down to three seconds. The first period gonna come to an end though just as I think he was He just stepped in. over, had everything tied up. Yep. It was being one second from being over. Five to nothing, the lead for Nemanja as we will start the second period. Logan gonna get the choice. It looks like he's gonna start down here, Bill. Yep, he wants to get some more points. Build up a little bigger lead. Still shaking that right elbow a little bit. Right to his feet, trying to get some hand control. It spins out. Nice job of standing up with the hands. Again, both wrestlers back into a tie. This time, Harbro drops down a little bit, tried to reach for a pick. Logan drops right down low as, as uh, Harbro reached for the head. Got into the one leg. Harbro keeps stuffing the head. Man, he needs to either switch off to a double with that head there on the outside. He's got the knee pulled in pretty good. Now he starts to come up, gets his power under him a little bit. Lifts the leg up in the air. Tries to lift it, does lift it, pops him down to the mat, gets his takedown. Under a Covers minute to up go. well. Up eight nothing now, 55 seconds to go in the second period. You hear the coaches yelling, they want him to get into another head lever. He did a nice job with it in the last period. Now he's getting the wrist out there. Here it comes, he's putting that head right there in the armpit. Starting to drive a little bit. Snips the head underneath. There's a good head lever right into the half again. Sink that half a little deeper. Picking up back points. See if he remembers what he did to tighten it up the last time. He had to step over to get it. Harbor bridging hard under there. It looks like he had the head lifted quite as high. He'll pick up the win by fall. 12 seconds remaining here in the second period. So Logan Amani will pick up the win by fall for Coon Rapids Baird. They will take a 12 to nothing lead here as we head into the third matchup at uh, 152 pounds. And Andrew Murley will go for East Sac County against Eli Snyder for Coon Rapids Baird. And this could be interesting. You got a, a two and eight against a one and three. Merely a freshman, Snyder a junior. Merly goes in, reaches across, gets that far leg. Snyder trying to reach around behind, get behind him. Coach is yelling, pick up that near ankle, which he does. Gets him down on the mat. There's going to be a two takedown. And there's the two points. Four. Catches him over on his back with a reverse half. Murley trying to get to his base. Snyder trying to slide a half in. Murley comes to his feet with that half in. Snyder just keeps driving it. Back to his base. Here, uh, the coaches from Coon yelling a lot of moves, and Snyder does every one of them just as they yell them out, and it's paying off for him. Picked up that ankle, they able to get him over to the back, but Murley turned on through. Still just two to nothing, 55 seconds to go in this first period. I think you've got a wrestler that's just learning how to wrestle, and the coaches are trying to get him through the match. Putting that half on when he's up. It <laughs> can be a little dangerous. They're going to go out of bounds. Early that time, <laughs> got to his feet, Bill, and almost had his hands free. Yeah, it's 
when that half is in when you're up, you better be in control of an ankle or something on the backside. And Eli might get in a little trouble there, but he'll learn that as he learns. Murley gets to his feet, trying to pick the hands to get loose, drops back down to the knee. Eli picking up an ankle in the far arm. Murley again, trying to spin around. Here he comes around, gets his reversal. Almost had him ready to go back. They slide out of bounds with 18 left here. Yeah, and the matchup tied up at two apiece between Andrew Murley of East San County and Eli Snyder from Coon Rapids Baird. Eli comes right to his feet. Murley picks him up, drops him back down. Tries to tie a hand. Snyder right back up. Reaching over the top, he's got to get that arm back underneath if he's going to reach, otherwise get back to his base. Right there, you can tell you got a couple green wrestlers. If uh, Murley puts a half in right there, he's got him in trouble because <laughs> Eli's reaching back, but they're both going hard. So the first period will come to an end. We're tied here at two apiece. Murley will start down here in this second period. Almost an illegal start there. Eli's got to get off his knees a little bit. Murley comes up, gets one. So Murley with his first lead here, three to two, 15 seconds into the second. Snyder period. back in on those legs though. Got the head down in between. If he can pop it off the side, get the power under him. He's got a hold of the left ankle, Bill. Looked like he was trying to slide off to the side there for a moment and now is going to be able to. Now he's trying to work his way around there and Eli comes back up to his feet. We really don't have anything yet and they're going to slide out of bounds. A minute 19 to go, second period. Three to two lead right now for Andrew Murley from Eastside County. And uh, Eli was in on a double, got stretched out a little bit. He's got to keep his base under him a little better. Again, he'll learn that as he wrestles a little more. In votes, you can find all of our wrestling broadcast available on our KCIM and KKRL and Kick 106.7 websites and also on the Facebook pages. That time, Murley was able to lower his level and get in on the double and get the takedown. He's got trying to ride high if he's trying to go to a cradle or something, but now he's gotten back behind. Still reaching over a little bit on the top end. Snyder keeping a pretty good base under him. Murley trying to put a half in there. Snyder sitting out from under it. If Murley can slide on around, he could be in trouble. Slips the hat, reverse half in. 16 seconds left in the period. Gonna get three back points out of it. That'll give him an eight to two lead. And he's got a pretty good half sunk in here, but I don't know if he's got enough time to drive it. Really got to come around on the side and drive that thing. Second period will come to an end. And Andrew Murley from East Side County going to have an 8-2 to two lead over Eli Snyder. And Eli kind of reached back with that uh, arm and let him get that half in there pretty easily. So they're going to go neutral here. There's Murley dropping down again, going to the legs. Eli kind of reached over. If Murley would have put the half in there and stepped the other side, he had him in trouble. Again, he's kind of riding with that half, but he's got to switch sides. There he's trying to. There he goes. Now he can sink that half pretty deep. There's the win by fall for Andrew Murley from East Sac County. They'll pick up their first victory of the matchup, and that'll make it 12 to 6 Coon Rapids Baird. We'll move to the 160 pound weight class, and that should be a forfeit from Austin Gosh from Coon Rapids Baird. He'll win by forfeit as East Sac County open at 160 pounds. 
And Bill, that'll move us into one of our next matches. At 170 pounds, Quentin Ackerman will go for East Sac County against a Spencer Winnett from Coon Rapids Bayer. And he'll go against Quentin Ackerman. Yep. So Ackerman heading up to the table, and then things get open. All the way up until 126, according to what the coaches have scheduled here. So this will be our second to the last match that we will actually have wrestling here tonight. As Ackerman and Wynette are ready to go. Wynette 11 and three, Ackerman one and six. Wynette's trying to get some hand control. Pops duck under, doesn't quite get all the way through. Going two on one. Got the tie in a little bit. Trying to work around. There he did a nice switch off to this lower leg. Got his take down. He'll pick up two. Got that forearm. And Bill Wisely trying to drag him back in. He's got him pretty tight right there. Yeah. And you could tell Spencer knew where he was at. It seemed to me anyway, Bill, on the mat because he spun around and got to the out-of-bounds side. He kind of slid Ackerman back onto the mat a little bit there so he could have room to be able to make that win by fall. And he got her, so. All right, will put Coon Rabbits Baird on top here, 24-6. to six. Chris Vilhauer now is scheduled to win by forfeit uh, for East Sac County. At 182 pounds, that would make it. 24 to 12. Both teams then open at 195. And we'll get a forfeit victory for Cole Rowetter. And to 220 pounds at four. Oh, Rowetter not going to wrestle here. Yep. Here he comes. Oh, yep, at 195. So, yep, Rowetter will get the win by forfeit. He will receive a forfeit. Got a match ahead of myself here for a second, Bill. At 285, Wyatt Riley, pretty sack. You can hear probably in the background, Jim Molitor, a very familiar voice to a lot of people around the Carroll and Coon Rapids Barrett area, doing the PA here tonight in Coon Rapids. Micah Hoffman now going to get a four bit for Coon Rapids Barrett. Patrick McAllister should pick up a four fit at 113 for Coon Rapids Barrett. That will make it a 36 to 24 in favor of the Crusaders. And then 120, we are scheduled to be open at both. As Christian Hilgenberg, who usually wrestles at 120 and did earlier tonight for the Crusaders, is scheduled to go now at 126 against Matt Marshall from Eastside County. And Bill, that will be our final wrestling match of the night, as we'll have 132 pounds, and that'll be a forfeit uh, for Coon Rapids Bear, because Eastside County will not have a wrestler at that weight. So we'll move to 126 here, Christian Hilgenberg taking on Matt Marshall. Matt Marshall, And again, Coon should have a, a definite advantage here, 13-1 junior against two and six freshmen. And we saw Hilgenberg really control his matchup earlier, Marshall. Struggled a little bit, but I tell you what, I was really impressed, Bill, with the fact that he just didn't quit fighting out there. He did. He just kept coming. He was. Uh, he knew he was outmanned a little bit, but he just never gave up. Hilgenberg gets in the legs, gets a nice takedown. But again, Marshall's always got a good, pretty good base. He's not just going to lay flat and let you tie things up. So it's always good to see out of a young kid. Hilgenberg going to that far arm. Looks like he's trying to come up maybe with a cradle. Looks like he's got it close. Now he's got, I think he's, no, he let it go. Now putting a half in on that right side. And again, Marshall's able to fight his way out of bounds. Right, Difference we'll there. With a half as he's coming up, he had that back leg tied up as well. So, whereas Eli before had that half, but not the leg. So, Christian's able to keep control of him. And again, Marshall just keeps working under there, staying in pretty good position. There's a cradle. 
Now we're going to pop it back. Didn't get it long enough to get two, but he still got it hooked up. Trying to drive him across to his hip. There he does. Now he's going to tilt him up. He's got almost a minute left, so he's got plenty of time. He got the knee and the hip. Picking up Driving backwards. across. It's going to be pretty tight. Yeah. No. I think he could have finished there, maybe yeah. working for a few more points here. Yeah, five to nothing the lead right now for Hilgenberg. 30 seconds to go here. Again, Marshall could have just let it go, but they're he gonna, rolled on through to make yeah. sure he got out of there. And I think they're going to fix Marshall's headgear here. There's his headgear down over his eyes. And he's got and a bloody he's got nose, a bloody so we're going to have a little bit, of, a little blood bit time. of blood time. Bill, out of all the matches you've seen tonight, and I know we've been down here for a little while here this evening, but uh, what matchups uh, have kind of stood out to you while we're fixing this blood time here, and, and what wrestlers have kind of jumped out at you as have wrestled well, well? We've had a lot of wrestlers that were, you know, outmatched their opponents by quite a bit. There's some kids here that are some pretty good wrestlers. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't end up with two of those going against yep. each other, so we got some great matches, but we had some pretty good matches. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of that one in the first meet. Uh, I was thinking, too, uh, that if you go back to the Van Meter and uh, couldn't have its Baird matchup, the uh, uh, Patrick McAllister, uh, yep. Luke Acosta matchup. That's what I was thinking up. And where Christian Hilgenberg, Eric Wilson. Wilson ended up getting beat 10-7 there, uh, but Hilgenberg looked to be in control, but Wilson did a good job yep. of just kind of staying in that one and not allowing himself kind of get beat and get pinned uh, at that time. And uh, just kept that coming back. Yeah. yeah. Cause no, those were the two I were think was thinking of as well. Otherwise, we've had a lot of people kind of outmatched a little bit yep. and had a lot of early pins. But, uh, you know, and this match isn't that close, but uh, little Matt Marshall, he just keeps fighting in there, and he's going to give you everything he's got. Certainly well impressed with him tonight. like the effort you're getting out of that young guy. You know, and Kristen knows what he's doing, and he's just out there, you know, very meticulously building up a lead here, staying in control. And the lead right now is 5 to nothing. 10 seconds to go here in the first period is they're going to get out of bounds again. They'll bring them back to the middle. Seven seconds remaining. This will be our final wrestled match tonight. We do have one more weight class remaining, which will be a forfeited weight for East Sac County. So now the Beard will pick up again in this duel, no matter how this match up here turns out. First period comes to an end at 5-1. And Matt just kept working and finally got himself an escape as a uh, Hilkenberger was trying to get a turn and took a little bit of a chance, but uh, you know, he's still in control of the match, but uh, this Marshall kid just keeps coming. Marshall had the choice there, Bill, and chose to start down. I think he's comfortable being on the bottom. You know, and he's not afraid to go down there. Yeah. So, you know, this time Hilkenberger's still working on that half a little bit, and uh, Marshall just keeps picking it off and turning away and keeps those hips up in the air. Does a nice job with his position. Not going to make it easy for Hilgenberg. Christian really putting a lot of pressure on that head, trying to work him and roll him, but I think they're going to slide out of bounds. Slide out of bounds again. Minute 29, minute 31, I should say, left here in the second period. <coughs> Excuse me. Marshall tries to come up again. Hilgenberg gets that post arm, pulls him right back down, but Marshall's always got those hips up in the air. He's a uh, He's not going to just break flat for you. Hilgenberg again, working on that half. Keeps tying up Chris. This time he's got that ankle tied up with him. Keep him in bounds. He's got the half in if he can keep him in. And I think he's going to get her done. There we go. There's some points being counted this time. Got her in pretty tight this time. Marshall trying to bridge, but in doing so, really brought himself back onto the mat more. 
And there's the win by fall for Christian Hilgenberg uh, from Kunab with Baird, 16 seconds remaining in the second period when he picks up that victory. So a good win here by Hilgenberg at 126 pounds. And he really did it by bringing, uh, you know, he kept going after the half, but that time he was able to pick up an ankle, drive him forward, get a little bit of an angle on it. And it worked better for him as he was able to get him turned over. So the Crusaders will win this one here tonight. And if my math comes up correctly, that concludes the duel. That should be a 48 to 24 victory for the Crusaders. So let's run you through these matchups here again tonight. We'll start off at 106 pounds where Micah Huffman from uh, Coon Rapids Bayard picked up a win by forfeit at 113 pounds. Patrick McAllister picked up a win by forfeit uh, for Coon Rapids Bayard. 120, both teams are open at 126 pounds. Christian Hilgenberg from Coon Rapids Bayard picked up a win by fall over Matt Marshall at 132 pounds. Liam McAllister from uh, Coon Rapids Bayard picked up a win by forfeit at 138 pounds. It was uh, Zach Evans picking up a win by fall over Isaac's Michael Sutton at 145 pounds. Logan Namani from uh, Coon Rapids Bayard picked up a win by fall over at Colin Habrell from Isaac County at 152 pounds. It was Andrew Murley from uh, Isaac County picking up a win by fall over Eli Snyder. At 160 pounds, Austin Gosh uh, from Coon Rapids Baird picks up a win by forfeit. At 170 pounds, Spencer Winnett from Coon Rapids Baird picks up a win by fall over Quentin Ackerman. At 182 pounds, Chris Vilhauer for Isaac County picks up a win by forfeit. Both teams open at 195 pounds. At 220 pounds, Cole Rowetter from uh, Isaac County picks up a win by forfeit. And at the heavyweight division, 285 pounds, it was Wyatt O'Reilly from Isaac County also picking up a win by forfeit. But again tonight, it was uh, Coon Rapids Baird edging by Van Meter 34 to 33. They won it four to two in first takedowns. I think it was all the way down to tiebreaker eight, if I remember yep. correctly. Uh, in the second matchup tonight, Van Meter defeated Isaac County 48 to 24. And in the final matchup tonight, Coon Rapids Baird also defeating Isaac County by a final of 48 to 24. I want to thank uh, Bill Kane for joining me here tonight. Bill, I appreciate all the help that you give us uh, on our wrestling broadcast. That's fine. It's, it's fun to come down and watch the kids wrestle. All right. Again, thank you very much for joining us here for our CBTV broadcast. Have a great day, everybody.